the class I'm about to walk into, religious studies slash history. The art on the walls, each of the floors, there's art. I didn't know where it was, so nothing comes to mind except it took an econ test there, so a lot of bad memories. Oh gosh, I had a class in there one time. Um, I think it was a math class. Um, yeah, I, I have some knowledge of that. Um, I grew up in that scenario, so I knew about those bombings during the Vietnam War for protest, right? I certainly didn't know that. That's, it's actually shocking to know that it happened here. Oh gosh, I didn't, I don't remember that, no. It kind of, you know, brings back memories. I can remember a huge demonstration. We were coming up to Ascombe Hill, and there was a gauntlet of police and riot gear. And, um, and we started to charge toward the Army Math Research Center. And you could see it was still a few blocks away, fire bombs going off. Poof, poof. It was surreal. It felt threatened, but it was also there was an excitement. It was dangerous. And Madison was one of the places around the country where the war at home, if you will, was, the, was uh, waged the, the, the hardest. And people were frustrated. You see friends drafted, you don't understand why they're going and fighting in Southeast Asia. It seems tragic and ridiculous. The Vietnam War was not a popular war by 1970, um, if it ever had been. I learned about the war mostly when I came to college here in 1966 and started seeing uh, the destruction and trying to learn more about why and realizing that my friends were being jeopardized by being drafted. There was an entire community developing of uh, like-minded people that were also against the war and against the authority, uh, the inability to have a say in what was going on with the war. The men that I knew were going to extreme measures not to have to go into the army and be killed for a reason that they couldn't support. It was obvious I was going to be drafted and all the services called me. It just it didn't seem right that they could take two years of my life. I was scared. Uh, I was angry. And there was a sense people actually believed that a revolution was going to happen. It seems so far-fetched today, but um, people believe that. Because of the following CBS News special report, the program normally seen at this time will not be presented today. I had friends of mine that were in the thick of Vietnam, and some of them come back, and some did. This was my weapons division officer. I had a couple friends of mine that got drafted, but there was a couple of kids that were uh, younger than me, like a year or two younger that I knew from high school that didn't make it back and a couple of them came back, shot up pretty good. It got kind of, kind of rough over there. We were getting shelled pretty heavy um, with mortars, rockets, 122s, and I was in a bunker with a bunch of Marines, and we got a direct hit. And uh, quite a few people died. When I got back, we used to go down on State Street, and um, I had my Vietnam jacket on and stuff like that. We got called baby killers, and there's a lot of people didn't didn't like that we were there, and uh, it was hard. There was students rioting throwing eggs, tomatoes, calling you a baby killer, spitting on you, trying to anyway. 
and uh, it took a lot of willpower to not combat them. Because we hated the war, we blamed it on the soldiers. And, you know, I think a lot of people regret that, that that's what happened. But the Vietnam War, I mean, was just bombing, bombing, bombing. Hundreds of people dying at a time. And I think, you know, the vets must be, I mean, we really owe them more than an apology. You know, we did a terrible thing to them. And I mean, I don't think anybody really thought it through. And suddenly this thing happened and nobody knew who was involved. Nobody had heard any talk about this. This sort of, it wasn't any of the, the people involved in the anti-war movement. It, it just seemed out of left field. It was so, and it was, you know, people being killed. And uh, it was just more violent than anything I think most of us ever anticipated. The demonstrations uh, erupted into riots. Um, and, and they got a lot of national news coverage. But my goodness, uh, that pales uh, totally in comparison to what happened uh, in August of 1970. It was like this loud rumble. I thought somebody was like cherry bombs outside my bed. The bombing woke us up. We had no idea what it was and didn't think anything of it. You know, didn't never cross our minds that it was something as serious as it was. Suddenly the FBI was all over Mifflin Street and the police were all over and everybody was scared. This was something that just shocked everybody. And we were afraid that it was one of us. We were afraid that we were all gonna be in trouble we were um, less trusting of each other. It sort of really divided the community. The consequences of that action really, really um, put a damper on the validity of the anti-war movement. And not it was just that, there's sort of an apathy that was taking place. Um, they knew the draft was going to be ending soon. So the self-interest, you know, which I think drove a lot of people, just wasn't there anymore. The bombing of the MATH Research Center in Sterling Hall is probably the biggest story, you know, of my lifetime here. It sobered everybody up. Um, it, it, it uh, I think, made some, if not many, in the anti-war movement question uh, how far they had gone and what they were doing. There needed to be some, some monumental effort to help end the war. I never would have thought of a bombing. I never would have thought of anything. I thought we were making headway. You know, it was so much bigger than all of us, and, and we just didn't, we just wanted the war to end. We just wanted people to stop killing each other for no good reason.